Hey guys, my name is James Wilson. I'm a content developer over at Data Crew. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about Domo's public, nope, not published. What are we actually talking about? Very, nope, not variables. <laughs> this is a terrible start. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about Sandbox. Oh man, I don't know why Sandbox is a name that's so hard to remember. But anyway, Domo Sandbox is a bit of kit that Domo introduced, I think in the last year, yeah, in the last year that kind of emulates what GitHub does. Now, GitHub is designed for version control. Like if I was gonna sum up GitHub in one word, it'd be version control. Um, and Domo does provide that. But what the layer that Sandbox adds on top of that is it most importantly, it allows you to create or rather control when your changes go into production, when they actually start impacting the published jobs, when they start impacting dashboards that are being seen by executives, embedded analytics, uh, data sets that are being consumed by DDX bricks or um, custom apps. And actually that's my use case. Um, I had this situation where I developed this data pipeline um, or this data flow really that was feeding a DDX brick. And I said, oh, I wanna make this one small change, but I don't know that I'm gonna have enough time to get all this work done today. I don't know that it's gonna get approved by the, um, the sponsor of the project. So I need a wall that allows me to say, hey, I'm implementing changes, but I don't want those changes to go in production, right? I, I think any developer that's done CI to CD, like you guys all know what this is, but it wasn't really super easy to implement in Domo until Sandbox came around. So let's take a look at that. Uh, you can find Sandbox under admin governance Sandbox. I do believe it is a premium feature, um, but it is available for free to, and to, to test out here in the Domo community. And there have been changes kind of along the way and improvements to product. So I think it's worth taking a look at these days and, and um, I am recommending it with organizations that I'm partnering with and working with. In any event, um, to add a dev prod pipeline to an environment that just has production, i.e. to work backwards and add version control after the fact, you have to start by creating a linked repository. This was another reason I created this video. I wasn't really sure how this whole linked repository system worked, but this is how I'm implementing it um, in, again, organizations that I'm working for. So uh, I'm gonna start by creating a linked repository um, and I'm gonna go ahead and find the object type that I want to manage. Um, in repos, you can only manage one object type I think that's a, a, a choice. Um, but in our case, we're going to manage a data flow. In particular, we're going to manage my DDX brick data flow or my DDX data flow that outputs a data set. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save repository. Notice it does an initial commit. That initial commit, just like in GitHub, when I commit, it says, hey, here are the changes or here is the state or the definition of my project. I think one of the things you have to wrap your head around is that Sandbox does not take a snapshot of your data. It just takes a snapshot of your project definition. And as part of that, we're also gonna say who has access to this repo. More importantly, who, where can you promote the content? For, I, I, I recommend that you separate church and state, use publish to move stuff between instances and use sandbox for version control. Even if you have a separate instance for dev prod work, um, if possible, I would recommend that you, anyway, that you uh, separate publish from sandbox because otherwise things get confusing. But anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and share access with my current instance, my local instance, which is Domo community and give it the ability to promote. And once that's done, right, Domo does that initial commit. It says, hey, take a snapshot of what your content looks like. And immediately, because I'm trying to implement version control in a space that previously didn't have it, I'm gonna go over to shared repositories and I'm gonna go ahead and find that link repository, which has that link symbol. 
I'm going to promote my content right out the box. Now, when you um, work with Sandbox, you have to, especially if you're working with the data flow, you have to map to the input data sets. So I'm going to auto map and use the same ones. If I had a dev and a prod data set, maybe one data set is the full fat data set, all 2 billion rows, and the dev data set has just like a subset of that data, here's where you would um, differentiate between the two. Um, but in this context, they're all the same. Again, if I was mapping to different accounts or whatever, all of that would be handled here. I think the most compelling reason to use, well, one of the more compelling reasons to use Sandbox is it automatically handles content renaming, which is very useful. So I'm going to say, hey, everything is currently called underscore live. Is that right? Everything has that pre that suffix underscore live. And I'm going to replace that with underscore dev because that's the stuff that that's my whole goal here. Dev appears at the end. It's a suffix. And I want to rename all of my data flows and data sets that have the word live and replace it with dev. I'm going to go ahead and click promote and link. OK. So immediately it says, hey, what do you want the name of your new sandbox to be? And you might be like, Jay, why do I have two sandboxes? OK, remember, the linked repository allows me to work backwards and add a dev pipeline. That dev pipeline will say, OK, here's this data flow. These are the inputs. These are the outputs. And I'm going to save changes to my dev data flow into a new repository. Sandbox underscore dev. This sandbox link, once I've done my initial commit in test sandbox dev, once I've done my initial commit, I don't need the linked repository anymore. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it so that whoop, I need to go to my repositories. I'm going to go find that underscore link, and I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I don't need it anymore. OK. So now I have a repository called test sandbox dev. And the most compelling part is if I come back into the data center here, I can now see I have two data flows, live and dev. They are sorted by creation date. So I know live was or still is live. It's still feeding my DDX brick. It's still feeding my dashboards that my executives are seeing. But what I'm very excited about is I can go here into dev and I can implement changes. I can make iterations. Um, without impacting production. And I think this is something that was desperately missing in Domo, but now we have it. So I'm going to add a formula tile. Let's say I'm um, experimenting with some stuff. I'm working on some Rankin window stuff. I'm adding new functionality. Maybe I got stuck. OK, so I have a data flow. It doesn't even run, right? but I can save changes. I can go to bed without having to worry about imp impacting prod because I still have a separate data flow for that. Right? This can stay broken. I can work with my coworkers. We can s figure this all out, but I'm not impacting production. What's also still very exciting, though, is I can back up my work. I can go into Sandbox, and I can say, oh, hey, I want to commit my changes. And I'm going to say um, this is a dot v1 or something. Um, working on new feature, ticket 1256. Um, but it's not done. And because it's not done, I'm not going to allow this commit to be promoted. I'm going to disable that button. I don't want someone to accident accidentally promote something that should not be promoted yet. On that point, though, I can go and I can look at my version history here. And I can see, oh, here's a version 1. That was my initial commit, the snapshot of the original. And then here's my version 2 that says, oh, hey, I'm working on a, this ticket. It's, it's not done. And so I cannot promote that change. OK. We're all very excited about this commit does exactly what it sounds like. It commits changes. 
Um, and what's kind of cool about this that's a little bit different from version control in just a data flow is it, you know, if I was managing five or 10 data flows in the same repository, it would take that snapshot, it would take that commit all at the same time. Um, if I go over here to live, we'll see that live has not been impacted, right? That formula tile isn't there. That's exactly what I want to see. Um, and let's go ahead and close the loop. Let's finish our implementation. So I'm going to go into dev here. Let me connect up my new formula tile. I, you know, my coworker told me how to solve my problem. Okay. I know. Don't please don't correct my my beast mode. <laughs> anyway, so cool. I, I uh, implemented the change. I implemented this new functionality. I'm wet, ready to push that change into production. I got my UAT done. Everybody's happy. All right, I'm going to go into Sandbox. And I'm going to go over to my dev repo. And I'm going to commit. Ooh, I need to be on my repos. I need to commit my change. So this is ticket 1256, I think is what I called it. Um, feature implemented, blah, blah, blah. Cool. I will allow this commit to be promoted. I'm going to go ahead and save changes. And again, just like in GitHub, right? If you do a lot of work, once I push the commit button, that's when it commits these changes. And then the next thing I need to do in order to actually see it is I need to go over to shared repositories and I need to go ahead and promote those changes. I'll go ahead and click the promote button. It's going to ask me some questions. The most important question is, is what do I want to rename um, stuff? So I currently am using the post fix underscore dev. And I want to replace that with underscore live. OK, if I did that at the end, replace data flows and data sets, yep. So if I ran this as is, you wouldn't notice a change because all it does is it says, hey, take the string DDX landing page underscore dev, replace underscore dev with underscore live. It would look like what we already have and you wouldn't be able to see a difference. But what if we had a change in naming convention and we said, oh, just kidding. Instead of saying live, we're going to call it prod. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save ch changes and I'm going to promote. When I click promote, it should push my changes into production if it works successfully. So here I am. Let me go ahead and press refresh. OK. The data flow is now called underscore prod. And if I. Oh, look, here's my formula tile. The change, the change in my ETL has been pushed through to production. So now when I run it, I will update my DDX brick data set. My dashboards that are being that are being fed by this data set will now reflect this new change. And what's very powerful, again, is this process could have taken 10 minutes or it could have taken three weeks, right, to get UAT done and get these changes implemented and accepted and all of that. But when it's ready to put it into production, I just push one button and everything works as expected. Um, that's the power of this whole sandbox repository functionality. If you're not using sandbox for managing dev prod pipelines, I strongly recommend at the bare minimum do this. If you want to take a look at doing dev prod and QA, that gets a little bit complicated, um, but it can still work. And so again, I would say in that context, I would do all of my changes in dev and have a repo for QA have a branch for prod, um, and then kind of take it from there. But anyway, my name's Jay Wilson. Like I said, I'm a content creator over at Data Crew. If you have any questions, please find me in the Domo user group Slack channel. I'll link that in the description below. 
And uh, otherwise, good luck. Have fun. Catch you guys later.